So welcome, my name's Anna Dushinsky from the Optimum Health Clinic. I'm Director of Psychology and I'm here with Tanya Page, she's Director of Nutrition. Hi. Hello. Hello. And this is the first in a series of videos that we're going to do talking about the specific symptoms of chronic fatigue and ME and how they relate in terms of the psychology and nutrition. Because obviously, um, from each of our points of view, we've got certain understandings of each of these symptoms and how they're caused. And we thought it'd be interesting to look a little bit more for you guys at how they relate. So today we're going to be talking about IBS, Irritable Bowel Syndrome. And from a psychological point of view, we tend to think of it very much as being, or literally being linked to emotional stress, emotional holding, really. And as we know, the, the gut is thought of as its second brain. I think there are even direct pathways, aren't they? So it's proven fact. So we know that anything that we're thinking or feeling has a direct impact on the way the gut is functioning. So from a psychological point of view, if you're in anxiety, if you're in emotional stress, it's going to have a knock-on effect in terms of being in the fight-flight state. But what's interesting to look at is how that actually produces the symptoms of, of IBS. So from a physical point of view, just briefly, what is IBS? How would you describe it? Okay, well, I often talk about um, IBS as a kind of umbrella term for us really not knowing what, or well, what the medical profession don't really know <laughs> what, what's, uh, what's going on in the gut, mm. but, but something's wrong. Okay. Um, from our perspective, uh, and there was another video blog actually on IBS, which goes into a lot of detail yeah. um, about this, that there are a lot of physical reasons for, for IBS, mm. uh, which we can look at. But when we're looking specifically at the, the link with, with stress, um, there's, you can just as easily get the very strong link to um, yeah. the major IBS symptoms, which yeah. um, the, it really comes back to the fight or flight situation where okay. the, the body, uh, the last thing the body actually wants to do in fight or flight, when it's got to run or think or, or do anything mm. quickly, the last thing it wants to do is digest food yeah. because really it's irrelevant at that point. And takes a huge amount of energy as well. Precisely. Yeah. So the... the Really, that, that's just put aside. And when, when the digestive process stops, that means all the digestive juices aren't produced, it yeah. means stomach acid isn't produced, the whole digestive process comes to a halt. Which is interesting to note. So fight-flight response actually causes the digestive system itself to stop functioning Absolutely. completely. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's a difference between you know, the digestive system stopping when there's something very, very stressful going on yeah. and when there's something sort of, on, when, when there's ongoing, ongoing stress. stress. When yeah. you have that ongoing stress, it tends to just really, really slow down the system okay. Okay. to the point where constipation tends to occur. So, okay. so that's a sort of classic IBS case. Okay. Uh, things just slow down to the point where you get congestion in, okay. in the gut. So that would be kind of the first symptom that you'd often have from IBS? Quite often. Quite often. Yeah. Not always, People are different, but, yeah. but the classic sort of IBS symptoms yeah. are, are constipation, which yeah. then brings about um, things like bloating and, and pain. Okay. The, the backup itself causes the pain okay. and the cramping. Um, also, when you've got... Um, waste material mm -hmm. um, sitting there not not doing much or moving very slowly yeah. um, then you tend to get um, fermentation okay. of the remaining food in there yeah. which causes gas which yeah. causes bloating and pain yeah. so those are the major um, symptoms okay. that, that you would experience okay so essentially body goes into stress and if we're talking about kind of longer term ongoing stress and it causes everything to slow down a lot yeah. causes a level of constipation or, or kind of sluggishness to start which in turn will cause, as you say, backup, which is pain, yeah. and also for the system to, to go into kind of fermentation, which causes the bloating. Yeah, and, and over time, of course, the, the backup will eventually move. Okay. And at that point, one tends to get um, diarrhea-type symptoms okay. or, or a classic upset stomach. Yeah. Um, the whole thing moves, moves along very nicely, yeah. uh, and then the whole process starts again. Okay, which is why you often get those cycles with yeah. people who have IBS of, of constipation, bloating to, yeah. to diarrhea. Absolutely. Okay, all right. So that's a kind of, uh, I suppose, a slightly shorter term. You know, if you're in anxiety and, and, mm. and emotional stress over a, a shorter period of time, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Obviously, one of the things we talk about a lot with chronic fatigue is the kind of maladaptive stress response where actually the system is in chronic ongoing yeah. stress over a longer period of time. What happens there and what are the kind of physiological symptoms that can, that can be caused as a result of that? Yeah, well, the main problem, and anyone with constipation that isn't related to IBS will know that you feel very uncomfortable and yeah. very often people will say to me they feel actually toxic when, okay. when they're constipated. Yeah. The reason for that is when material is moving through slowly, um, the body has a process where it puts fluid into the gut and mm. then reabsorbs it out okay. and that, that's something that happens every day okay. and it's quite a lot of fluid that okay. is moving. And while, um, while the 
the fluid is being um, sucked back out of the, the gut, yeah. um, it actually has to be processed in some way. All the toxins okay. from, from there will have to be reprocessed in the liver. Okay. So essentially you can get a recycling of toxins going on. Right. And over time, um, over a protracted period of constipation yeah. or you know, the gut going up and down all over the yeah. place, you'll get a lot of toxins recycling right. into the liver. So it puts the liver under more and more strain okay. and then makes you feel more and more toxic. Yeah, and more and more sluggish, presumably. Absolutely. And yeah. presumably also, if we talked about fermentation and, and allowing kind of nasty bacteria to, mm. to kind of proliferate, again, I, I would guess that's going to cause problems as well, particularly since your gut is the, the hub of the immune system. Yeah, with, with toxicity, you... Um, you will enhance the environment for the pathogenic bugs, okay. the, the, the bad bacteria that are not good for your gut. Um, this tends to bring in, well, where you have bugs, you generally tend to have heavy metals. Mm -hmm. So then you just add something else to the picture. Yeah. Um, and, and over time, the, the more pathogenic bacteria and bad bacteria you have, the yeah. less room there is for the good bacteria. Yeah. And it's actually the good guys that are helping your gut to move normally. Okay. They actually create the peris peristaltic action. Okay. Um, and, and one of the other main, um, the other main reasons for them being there is that, um, apart from sort of finishing off the digestion of your mm -hmm. food, um, they they also have a sort of antibacterial, okay. um, antiseptic type quality to them. Yeah. So they they form quite a major part of your immune system from okay. the inside. So okay, so toxicity, livers under stress, yeah. immune systems under stress basically and I'm yeah. also guessing if all of this is going on your absorption of nutrients is going to be impaired along the way. Yeah absolutely if, if the yeah. gut's moving in an erratic fashion mm. then when you're uh, when you're constipated then you're just going to get too much of a backup. Yeah. Um, when, when it's moving fast yeah. um, you're uh, you know the, the the digestive system won't have a chance to take nutrients out before yeah. they go straight through so where you don't have a stable uh, throughput, yeah. you're not going to have a stable amount of nutrition going into the body, yeah. if at all. Okay. Um, obviously, some will yeah. go in, but but it will be it will be um, dampened compared to where you okay. need to be. So, so we know that stress can cause all of this. So emotional stress, anxiety can cause all of these net effects. I guess the next question is, what do we do about treating it? Because it was mm. psychology, and you've got nutrition. Mm. So. One of the questions I suppose people are thinking is, you know, where do I go? Or I've been treating it from one angle but not the other. Do I need to do both? What's your sense mm. on that? It, I think it depends how it presents to us. Yeah. Um, generally speaking, it's always nice when I've got someone working the other side of the clinic because I yeah. know that they're being looked after yeah. in terms of the, the maladaptive stress response. Yeah. So I know that everything that I'm doing is going to be positively yeah. um, received by the body. And that's a really um, good point, actually, that, that if the system remains in stress, obviously we take IBS as an example, mm -hmm. if that's the root and yes. the system, you know, you keep triggering your system into stress, you keep having that yeah. level of emotional stress and anxiety going on, presumably it's going to be a lot harder to treat from a physiological point of view if that's, you know, a central part of what's happening. Absolutely. All you're doing in that sense is firefighting. Right. Because uh, you can get rid of some of the reasons why it's, yeah. it, it, why the symptoms are manifesting. Yeah. But if you're not treating the, the, the causal factor... Yeah then you're just chucking supplements and treatment, yeah. uh, you know, down the drain, essentially. Absolutely. And I suppose from our point of view, if you are treating and you're doing a lot of work on the anxiety and stress response and the emotional response, but actually the physical isn't changing as much as it should, yeah. it's quite an indication probably that there's too much going on yeah. you know, long term, too much kind of damage, I suppose, or too, much, too yeah. many problems in the system that need treating from a physiological point of view. Yeah, obviously, if it's gone to the extent where you're, um, you've got maybe undesirable residents in the gut, like yeah. parasites or bacteria or, yeah. or, or yeast, they actually need to be um, sorted Dealt out. Okay. And then you're in a position to, to then take control of the system Damn. again. Okay. So in other words, if you can do both, that's, that's a great way forward. Um, and what we do really and what we're quite good at doing is, is to help point you in the direction of what you need to do most and when. That's, that's really where, where we work. So if that makes any sense to you and you're interested in talking to us more, either speak to your practitioner or if you want to talk to us, then you can always have a free 15-minute chat. So please do get in touch. Thank you very much, Tanya. Okay. Thanks.